Photosynthesis is chapter eight in your textbook. You're gonna be taking Cornell notes today. So draw your line about an inch from your margin and you're gonna take your notes on the right side of the line. Then when you're done with your notes, you're gonna add questions in the left-hand column and a summary at the end of your notes. So do plants eat? No, they don't. They don't have a digestive system, they don't have a mouth. So how do plants get their energy? Here, look at this picture. What are two living or biotic organisms that you see in this diagram or in this photo? You should have noticed the deer and the plants. So how does each of these organisms get the energy it needs to live? And the flowers, are they producers or are they consumers? What about the deer? Now, how do organisms get their energy? There's two different ways that organisms get energy. One is that they might be called an autotroph. Autotrophs make their own food. An example of an autotroph are plants, algae, and some prokaryotes. Autotrophs are producers. If you look at the root words, auto means self, troph means to feed. So autotrophs, they're making the food or making the energy themselves. The second type of way that organisms get energy is that they might be considered a heterotroph. These are organisms that need to obtain their food. They get their food or their energy from others, so they would be considered consumers. Examples of heterotrophs are animals that eat plants or animals that eat other animals, as well as decomposers. So what is photosynthesis? First, think about would organisms that go through photosynthesis, would they be an autotroph or would they be a heterotroph? Well, photosynthesis, if you look at the word, what do you think the definition is? Look at the, true, the two roots, photo and synthesis. Okay, the actual definition of photosynthesis is it's the conversion of light energy into chemical energy. So you're synthesizing energy using light. Photosynthesis, what it does is it converts solar light energy, or energy from the sun, into carbohydrates, or glucose, which is a chemical energy. Photosynthesis takes place in the chloroplast of cells. Chloroplasts are located in the leaves. They're an organelle. And inside of those chloroplasts is a green pigment called chlorophyll. Chlorophyll gives photosynthetic organisms their green color. This is a diagram of the structure of a chloroplast. Notice that it's surrounded by two membranes, an inner membrane and an outer membrane. Inside of the chloroplast, there are thylakoid disks, and they stack up to form what's called a grana. Surrounding the grana is something called the stroma. It's basically the, the space between all of the thylakoid disks. Next, we're gonna look at the equation for photosynthesis. We have carbon dioxide plus water, and it gives us glucose and oxygen. In order for this chemical reaction to take place, we need light energy from the sun. There's two important vocab words that you need to know relating to chemical equations. You have the reactant. The reactant is what enters into the chemical reaction. And then you have the products. The products are what are produced or what is produced in a chemical reaction. Now, photosynthesis is actually, we saw the equation, but there's actually two parts to photosynthesis, kind of two steps. The first step is a light dependent reaction, and this requires light. It takes place in the thylakoid membrane, and this is where light energy is converted into chemical energy. So energy is first stored as ATP and NADPH. So how do we know plants need light to use the carbon dioxide? Look back at your photosynthesis data table from the lab we just completed. Write one sentence that uses your data to explain how you know that plants use carbon dioxide in the light. OK, 
Okay, after the light dependent reaction, there's a light independent reaction. This is the second part of photosynthesis. It does not require light. Here, there's a process called the Calvin cycle, which uses the ATP and the NADPH from the light dependent reactions to convert the carbon dioxide to glucose. Have you ever seen someone do a presto change-o trick? Some of the living things that you see every day also do a pretty impressive changing act. No props required. You probably already know that all living things need energy to grow and to survive. And that plants are one of the few kinds of living things that can change light energy into chemical energy in the form of sugar. But if it's not magic, then how do they do it? How do plants change light energy into chemical energy? The answer? A word that kind of sounds like a magic spell. Photosynthesis. Let's take a closer look at a plant to track down exactly what photosynthesis is all about. While we're exploring, we'll use a diagram to show what's going on inside. Ever wonder why plants are green? Their cells contain a green-colored chemical called chlorophyll. The chlorophyll is found in special mini-containers called chloroplasts. When the sun shines on a plant's leaf, the green chlorophyll inside the cell grabs that light energy and uses it to change water and a gas called carbon dioxide into sugar. Another gas, oxygen, is released back into the air. So stop, take a deep breath, and thank a plant. Why? Because most of the oxygen in the air around you right now is there because of photosynthesis. And this is really convenient because you, me, and all other animals on Earth count on that oxygen to breathe. Plus, bonus, since animals can't do photosynthesis, they can get energy by eating the plants and all of the delicious sugar they made during photosynthesis. It's a two for one. So how do we know that light is what's so important for photosynthesis? Well, we can tell by doing an experiment using two plants as a model. Hmm. These are both the same type of plant with the same amount of soil. We'll put one plant in the dark for a few days and one in the light, making sure that both plants get the same amount of water and are kept at the same temperature, just to keep things fair. Now what do you think will happen? Right! The one that's been in the dark sure doesn't look too healthy. That's because there wasn't any sunlight to drive photosynthesis. Without photosynthesis, the plant can't make any sugar. No sugar means no energy, and no energy means a droopy, tired-looking plant. Plant. So photosynthesis is how plants use a chemical called chlorophyll to capture the sun's energy. They use this energy to change carbon dioxide and water to chemical energy in the form of sugar. This sugar, along with the oxygen that's released, is used by animals to survive. And that's a change we can all live with. Photosynthesis is an extremely important process. Globally, photosynthesis makes about 160 billion metric tons of carbohydrate, or glucose, per year. No other chemical process on Earth is more productive or, as, or is as important to life. Photosynthesis transforms light energy into stored chemical energy in the form of glucose molecules. We rely on those glucose molecules as our form of energy in order to make ATP through the process of cellular respiration, which is the energy our cells need to survive. All living things, plants, animals, and other organisms require glucose in order to survive. So photosynthesis is important to everyone.